Congressman, always good to have you. Thank you for taking the time. Thanks. Good to be with you. You know, uh, Congressman, we're learning right now that uh, I think a little more than 100 of these Republican primary winners um, who were largely backed by Donald Trump had, uh, you know, followed his claims that there was 2020 voter fraud going on. Does that sheer number surprise you? I wish I said it. I wish it did surprise me. Not really. Um, you know, let's keep in mind the former president does pick a lot of who he endorses based on who he's already going to think is going to win or who's ahead in the polls. But look, I mean, it, it is sad to watch. Just uh, I'm heartbroken by watching my party go from the party of Ronald Reagan, a commitment to truth, understanding America's role in the world, to a party that, frankly, its leaders know better. They know the election was not stolen. And instead of focusing on how now to turn back to the American people and sell a conservative vision for government, we're still relitigating 2020 and pretending like the system is broken. Listen, Neil, when you convince half of the country or even 30 percent of the country that if they vote, it doesn't count, that's how democracies fail, because that's the only basic contract we have to have is if you vote, it counts. So where does this go? I mean, uh, you know, the hearings have gone on for a little. I know this one you know, for tomorrow was, was pushed back a little bit. But I, I, I'm just wondering, Congressman, whether it's your sense that Trump lovers will still love him, Trump haters will still hate him, but that it really won't move the needle. What do you think of that? Well, I don't, you know, I don't know if it moves the needle in the short term, because I think your setup is right. There's a lot of people that are committed to President Trump, and no matter what we put out there, and these are facts, and these are uh, former Trump appointees saying this stuff, uh, they're not going to move off that. Even if we talk about the fact that, you know, $200 million was raised in 10 and $15 increments by people that literally thought they were going to stop the steal, and none of that was used for it. But I do think in the long term, and, and what matters to me, because I like to think in a historical perspective, in five or ten years, the truth is, is going to be written in the history books, and it's not even going to be controversial because of the work we're doing here. And I think the Republican Party eventually comes back to its senses and focuses on policy again and constitution and not commitment to a man. I just wish it would be sooner than it probably is going to be. I'm just wondering, too, because uh, a lot of people who, who look at you and your stance and your role in this committee think that it's some something that was born of the, the president's behavior at the time uh, on January 6th or prior. But actually, it goes back to the 2016 election where you refused to support him uh, outright. Uh, I, I'm, I am wondering, though, whether uh, if he survives this and runs for president again, uh, he might have a very good chance. And, and you are worried about that. You've said that, that a, a, a Donald Trump unleashed and, and getting the office again could do a number of things. What did you mean by a number of things? Well, look, I mean, uh, what Donald Trump has probably learned is people you put in positions around the Department of Justice, et cetera, instead of people committed to the Constitution, you put people loyal to you. Uh, as we're going to lay out in our future Department of Justice hearing, uh, we came very close to the DOJ doing the work of Donald Trump and not standing firm. And that's the risk we run. And so I can't support Donald Trump, even if he's the Republican nominee in the future. But I want to say this to my fellow Republicans. I think we have a really good shot at winning in 2024. Just look at the economy and all these other issues. Let's put a person in there in 2024 who is committed to truth, like we learned in Sunday school, committed to the Constitution, and is going to raise money from you for the purposes they're using it, not abuse you in your trust to raise money from you. All right, so if Donald Trump were to be the nominee in 2024, uh, would you support the Democratic nominee? I, I don't even know what you did in 2016 that year. Yeah, that year I wrote somebody in. It's probably okay. what I would do again. Not a Democrat, but I certainly don't feel like this kind of Trump Republican moment. Sir, well, I also have you here. Uh, you have said, and, and others on the committee have said, that a number of Republicans uh, after the January 6th insurrection had been seeking pardons from then-President Trump. Uh, one of them you cited was Representative Scott Perry of Pennsylvania. He uh, vociferously denies that was the case. Uh, how many did, according to you? Because they say none of that happened. Well, I'll just say stay tuned. That's going to come out over the next few weeks. We, we want to do that the right way and uh, with the evidence. So stay tuned on that. But I, th I think the bigger story here is that a lot of these people 
Uh, and I would argue that after January 6th, almost every member of Congress I know knew exactly what happened and knew what led to it. We just have a bit of amnesia at the moment. Um, now, you would opted not to run for Congress again. Uh, I'm just wondering, given the fact that uh, many people who did take on the president have survived to fight another day, uh, whether they voted outright for impeachment or were critical of Donald Trump after the fact. Now, has that, in retrospect, made you regret opting not to run? No, it hasn't. For a couple of things. First off, at the end of this term, I'll have been in Congress for 12 years. That's a long time. It's a, it's a long time to be traveling, to be going through the same battles over and over. I want to focus on a broader message around the country so that it kind of goes in conflict with Congress. And let's keep in mind the Democrats, like they did in 2010, drew me into a congressional district with another Republican member of Congress. So uh, I, I have no regrets about not running again. And uh, I think it was time anyway. 12 years is quite a bit of time out here. Yeah, you, you, you survived such you know, districts that are, you know, molded together uh, in the past. But having said that, uh, we had Bill Barr, the former attorney general on here, who, who and he was very critical of the president. And, of course, that the famous comment, it was BS, that there was any uh, rigging going on here. But uh, he, he said to date he doesn't see uh, grounds for any criminal charges uh, against the former president. Do you? And will the committee move, in your view, to file criminal charges, not only against uh, President Trump, but maybe others? Yeah, well, let's be clear. Obviously, we can't file charges. We right. can't go to put the Justice facts. Department. Right. Yeah, we can refer. That's a, that's keep in mind, too, this this investigation is still ongoing. So even after these hearings, we're continuing until the report. It's a decision the committee will make on that. I, I look at this and say there appears to be a multi pronged plan that the president tried to, in essence, have a soft coup to overcome the, the, the election. So as not a lawyer, it's a little different. To me, it looks criminal, but I'll leave the criminal charges to the Department of Justice. They're the experts at, at what that is. But the American people need to know uh, what happened. And by the way, if this is a Democratic administration in the future, anybody supportive of what happened would be outraged. We as Americans just have to hold firm to the rule of law and truth. So if, if you had your druthers and you were looking at all the evidence presented and you could go and petition yourself to the Justice Department to, to, to take up those charges and to pursue them, and it doesn't, would that disappoint you? No, I wouldn't be disappointed because, again, when I started this and when the committee started this, the point is to put out the facts. And I look at this exercise more as what is this going to say for the history books? How can this, uh, you know, fix the country going forward? Because, Neil, this threat isn't over. It's, it's still continuing. Nothing has changed. So that's what I really look for in terms of the impact is the future of this country and democracy. Congressman Kinzinger, very good catching up with you, sir. Thank you very much. You bet.